The true crime genre has captivated audiences for decades, offering a chilling glimpse into the darkest corners of humanity. From infamous serial killers to unsolved mysteries, true crime stories have the power to both terrify and fascinate us. But what is it about these macabre tales that keep us coming back for more? For some, it's a morbid curiosity, an attempt to understand the criminal mind, or a way to feel a sense of control over the chaos that surrounds us. However, there are also those who take their obsession with true crime to dangerous extremes, blurring the lines between interest and compulsion. One such case relates to 27-year-old Hampshire resident Shay Groves. On the morning of July 17, 2022, Vicki Baytup's phone buzzed with an unexpected video call from her dear friend Shay Grove. As she answered the call, her heart dropped upon hearing Shay's chilling revelation. She told Vicky that she just slit the throat of her boyfriend, Frankie Fitzgerald, and that she stabbed him a total of 17 times. While Vicky grappled with the horrifying news, Shay's demeanor remained eerily unshaken, almost as if she reveled in the grisly spectacle. Vicky would later describe how Shay pointed the camera at Frankie's dead body and said that she was about to clean the scene before burying his body in her back garden. It's at this point that Vicky decided to notify authorities. What's going on? Sorry, you're not... No, no, no. Don't on? close the door. What's going on? What's going on? Before. You Shay? I am Shay. Right. I had some kind of strange, interesting call about somebody having had their throat slit. Okay. So what's going on here? Shay Groves is a 27-year-old single mother from Lee Park, England. She was described as someone with a rough past, a non-conformist with a peculiar fascination with true crime and serial killers. She had a very difficult childhood, enduring significant mistreatment, which resulted in her struggling with various mental health conditions, such as complex PTSD and bipolar disorder, along with a history of self-harming behavior. Despite her difficult upbringing, she presented herself as a typical happy mother, often sharing snapshots of herself spending quality time with her daughter. Whether it was a day out exploring the world or a cozy afternoon in the kitchen whipping up cakes, their relationship appeared to be a healthy and happy one. But then, something changed. As the world came to a halt in 2020, Shay's fascination with true crime took a dark turn. She delved deeper into the twisted minds of killers, spending hours devouring documentaries and books about the criminal underworld. Her outward appearance underwent a transformation as well, with tattoos and piercings adorning her face, neck, and body, almost as if it was mirroring the internal changes happening within her. But amidst all of these changes, one thing remained a constant in Shay's life, her love for her daughter. In social media posts, Shay gushed with pride at her daughter's independence, promising to always be there to guide her through life's ups and downs. Shay and her daughter lived with her close friend Lauren White and her young daughter on Botley Drive in the village of Botley, Hampshire. It's also here where Shay's obsession with true crime became more evident. Shay had a wide collection of knives, Viking axes, and a Celtic dagger. And it wasn't just the weapons. A coffin-shaped bookshelf in one room added to the eerie atmosphere, while framed pictures of notorious murderers like Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and Rose West hung on her bedroom wall, serving as a chilling reminder of the twisted minds that captivated Shay. While her fascination with the dark world of true crime was well documented, it wasn't her only obsession. Her unconventional sexual preferences were another secret passion, one that she indulged in with the same intensity as her true crime obsession. She had a particular interest in a man named Frankie Fitzgerald, who'd become the object of her obsession taking up a significant portion of her thoughts and time. Frankie Fitzgerald was a 25-year-old resident of Portsmouth, and those who knew him described him as a kind, loving guy with a great sense of humor. His ability to diffuse tension with a well-timed joke was legendary among his family and friends, making him someone who was almost impossible to argue with. But when Frankie and Shay got together, their relationship was far from easy. They dated on and off for six months, with their passion for exploring unconventional sexual preferences being one of the few things that kept them together. Their mutual interest in kink had become a significant part of their lives, fueling a bond that was both intense and unpredictable. It was a side of Frankie that few people knew, and one that had brought him into Shay's orbit in the first place. 
They both enjoyed roleplay involving bondage, domination, submission, masochism, and knife play. Shay had even given Frankie written permission to wake her up through sexual intercourse from the date of March 22nd until further notice. It was a shocking move that spoke to the depths of their obsession and their willingness to push boundaries and explore even the most taboo aspects of their sexuality. But it's what would ultimately happen next that would shock the world even more. On that fateful Sunday morning of July 17th, 2022, at approximately 5 a.m., Shay sent a text message to her best friend Vicky, informing her that she and Frankie had officially ended their relationship. She said that after the breakup he had stormed out of the home and that she was certain that it was over between them. Moments after sending the text message, Shay then initiated a FaceTime conversation with Vicky, and despite the breakup she had just seemingly gone through, she appeared to be in good spirits, laughing and joking and just basically making small talk, but then seemingly out of nowhere there was a sudden shift in energy. Shay told Vicky that she needed to show her something big, but first made her promise not to tell anyone what she was about to reveal. After a bit of back and forth, Vicky finally agreed, and it's then that Shay turned the phone around and pointed it at the lifeless body of Frankie Fitzgerald laying on top of several trash bags and covered with a duvet. His body was riddled with a multitude of stab wounds, more than Vicky could count, and Shay deliberately placed her phone close to Frankie's body to reveal a severe gash on his throat. She told Vicky that she and Frankie had a very heated argument the previous night over one of her ex-partners, and that they ended up going to bed angry with each other. At some point during the night, she woke up and started going through Frankie's phone, and that's when she discovered a number of inappropriate messages between Frankie and someone who she believed to be a 13-year-old girl. Shay said that the discovery of these messages had pushed her over the edge, and that's when she reached for her dagger and started stabbing Frankie while he was sleeping. While in the process of disclosing this unsettling information to Vicky, Shay proceeded to clean up the scene without showing any sign of panic, and even giggling and laughing during the conversation. She continued to tell Vicky that she had everything under control, and that after she had cleaned up the scene, she intended to bury Frankie in the backyard, hoping that people would just assume that he had run off after their breakup and taken his own life due to the depression he'd been struggling with in the past. In fact, she'd already begun constructing this narrative when she initially texted Vicky at 5 a.m., informing her that Frankie had run off. Shay admitted to Vicky that the reason she sent the text message in the first place was to establish an electronic alibi for herself and cover up any suspicions about Frankie's disappearance. It was a calculated and disturbingly elaborate plan, and Vicky knew that she couldn't keep silent about what she had just witnessed. So immediately after the FaceTime call with Shay, Vicky contacted the police and told them everything she knew. Police arrived at the round 8 a.m. that morning, and despite standing outside the house, they could immediately notice the pungent odor of bleach coming from inside. After knocking on the door, Shay, who was clad in a pink robe, opened the door. What's going on? Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't close the door. What's going on? What's going on? Are you Shay? I am Shay. Right. I've had some kind of strange, interesting call about somebody having had their throat slit. Okay. So what's going on here? No, that's, that a dog, that's is it? my dog, yeah. Hello. You're under arrest just, on suspicion of murder. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later rely on in court, and anything you do say may be given evidence. The necessity for your arrest is for a prompt and effective investigation. As the investigation into Frankie's untimely demise unfolded, the grisly details began to emerge. A post-mortem examination had revealed the brutal extent of the violence that had been inflicted upon him. A staggering 17 stab wounds to the chest, two more in other areas of the chest, and three more to his neck. It was a senseless and brutal act of violence, one that left the authorities reeling with shock and disbelief. After discovering Frankie's lifeless body, both Shay and her roommate Lauren were taken into custody on suspicion of murder due to them both living in that apartment. However, as the investigation progressed, it became clear that the evidence against Lauren was flimsy at best. She was only charged with failing to provide the police with the password to her cell phone, a charge which was later dismissed. Shay, on the other hand, had the full might of the law thrown at her, and she was officially charged with murder on July 20, 2022, and eventually went on trial in January 2023. During the court proceedings, the Crown alleged that due to her obsession with the true crime genre, 
Shea Grove had become so well-versed in crime scene management that she knew exactly how to clean up a crime scene, discard of evidence, and even how to establish a deceptive alibi. The prosecutor painted a picture of a possessive girlfriend who killed her boyfriend in cold blood after allegations of cheating. They further alleged that Shea showed no remorse for her actions, even video calling her friend just hours after the murder, and even sending videos of herself pictured with him. During the trial, it would also emerge that Shay had set up a video camera in her bedroom and had edited video clips of her wild sexual encounters with Frankie to make it appear as though he was assaulting her. It was a disturbing display of manipulation and deception, further cementing Shay's depravity in the minds of the jury. Vicky would also later testify that Shay had used similar tactics to threaten previous boyfriends, gathering ammunition to hold over their heads and blackmail them in the future. Analysis of her mobile phone showed that while Frankie's lifeless body lay upstairs in her bedroom, Shay was busy sending messages to another man, inviting him to come over. It was a cold and calculated move, designed to create an alibi and deflect suspicion away from herself. After the Crown presented their case, it was time for Shay Grove to put forward her defense. She claimed that she lost control after discovering that Frankie had been messaging a 13-year-old girl on social media. She said that after she made this disturbing discovery, she became enraged and woke him up from his sleep. She then threatened to release videos online that allegedly showed his previous assault against her. Frankie then became angry and grabbed her by the throat, refusing to let go. It's at this point that Shay started fearing for her life, so she grabbed the closest object she could find and struck him in the throat. When she realized that she had actually stabbed Frankie with a dagger and that he wasn't going to survive, that's when she grabbed a knife and started stabbing him. She told the court about the violent relationship she had with Frankie and how he would often cross the line during their sexual encounters. She also presented text messages where he threatened to hang her if he ever caught her cheating. When questioned about her choice of room decorations, she said that she thought that they looked cool and that she just wanted to shock people. She said that she got the framed pictures from an artist on Etsy and explained that they weren't photos of serial killers, but that it was actually art. She further told the court that she was a pagan and that that dagger that she used to stab Frankie with was actually intended for her rituals, adding that it strengthened spiritual connections. The Crown, on the other hand, maintained that the sexual encounters between Frankie and Shay had always been consensual and that there were no evidence to suggest that he had abused her. Regarding the statement about the 13-year-old girl, the prosecution was able to establish that the girl was actually 17 years old at the time and that Frankie never entertained her and had actually blocked her. During closing arguments, the prosecution argued that the evidence presented during the trial had left no doubt of Shay's guilt. She had meticulously planned and executed the heinous crime, showing a complete disregard for the value of human life. Her attempts to create a false narrative and alibi were calculated and demonstrated a shocking lack of empathy for her victim and his loved ones. They continued to point out the inconsistencies in her story and the flaws in her logic. They argued that Shay was a cold-blooded killer, driven by obsession and jealousy, and that justice demanded that she be held accountable for her actions. On February 17, 2023, after 11 hours of deliberations, the jury at the Winchester Crown Court unanimously found Shay Grove guilty of the murder of Frankie Fitzgerald. Shay, who was wearing a jacket with a pentagram on the back, smiled as the verdict was read out. She was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 23 years. While the case of Shay Groves is certainly disturbing, it also raises important questions about the influence of true crime on our society. For some, it's simply an interest in a fascinating genre, but for others, it can be a dangerous obsession that distorts reality and encourages violent behavior. The case of Shay Groves serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the importance of being mindful of the media we consume and the potential impact it can have on our thoughts and actions. By doing so, we can honor the victims and their families and prevent similar tragedies from happening in the future. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and let's continue to explore the world of true crime with empathy and respect.